So anyway, so October we met face to face by me driving up there. November she drove out here and uh, bought me the recorder. Uh, I started recording tracks the day the recorder came in. Uh, tracks that eventually wound up on the first album. Uh, I think it was December you had come out and we were talking about stuff and I had come up with a riff for Fetish, which is a, actually the second song on our first album. I had recorded some stuff for some of the other songs like Fire and Ice. I think I started laying down the tower and possibly 2525 at the, that point. Uh, but I'd come up with a riff for Fetish. I just really hadn't decided what I was going to do with it. And usually the way I write is I'll pick up the guitar or possibly the bass, uh, goof around with it a little bit. And if I come up with a riff I like, then I'll try to flesh that out and make it uh, a complete rhythm track. I may not have any idea of what the lyrics are going to be about at that point. What I will do is listen to that riff after it's been recorded and kind of see how I feel about it. I hadn't gotten that far with, uh, with Fetish yet. It was just, just a single guitar line, nothing else down on there. She came out to visit and we were talking around about the music and we said, we were talking about something. I don't know if we were talking about sex or something else. But I think it was you who actually first used the word fetish in the conversation that we were having. Oh, I don't even remember. I go, oh, you mean like a fetish? Right. It was like that. <laughs> Something like that, exactly. And the light went on over my head. I went, fetish. That would be a good title for that song. And it, from there my brain started working and I started thinking of, you know, well, this would be kind of cool to kind of just write down the different what are the different sex fetishes that people have? You know, and we got feathers, we got whips, chains, you know, um, fuzzy handcuffs, uh, silk, whatever, you know. So, so that was how that song was conceived and eventually written. Um, wound up being recorded, and we did make a music video for it. Uh, we're getting ready to do a cassette only EP, five songs, and it's going to have two songs each from our first two albums, plus it's going to have a brand new song. Monster the Man includes one dollar. Uh, those are the names of the first two albums. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what the name of the new song is, but I felt like the monster that made the man, I felt like the material was good, but it was kind of lacking in production. So if I was going to put songs off of there, I felt like they needed to sound better, so I decided I would re-record them. Fetish is one of the ones that we picked. Yeah. So we got new guitars, we got a new amplifier, and we got a new drum set. Okay, so what we're doing is we're gonna hook up the recorder and the amplifier and the guitar and everything and get tuned up. And then we're going to lay down a preliminary track for the song Fetish. So we're gonna start with uncovering the recorder and getting it turned on. This is a Boss. 1600 BR 1600 CD digital recording studio. It's got 16 main tracks and uh, 240 virtual tracks. So I can essentially use 256 tracks to make a song. And we're not going to be using that many for fetish, but uh, for the purposes of redoing Speed Freak, I wound up using 33 tracks, which that sounds like a lot for just drums, bass, two guitars, and vocals. But it depends on how good you want to make the recording. You wind up double tracking a lot of things, uh, doing some copying of certain things to kind of enhance sound and, and things like that. Of course, with Speed Freak at the very beginning, there's cars running and people screaming and stuff like that. And that took up eight tracks just by itself. So. Wow. So right now the recorder is warming up? No, the recorder is on now. Okay, and it's set for another song that we've been working on that's going to be on the next full length album. So, what I have to do is I have to hit utility, scroll over to song, hit enter, scroll over to select. And since the original version of Fetish was recorded on this machine, then it'll still be here. All I have to do is scroll up to find it. Now, of course, I've done two full albums on this plus a bunch of other songs, so it's up here a long, long ways. There it is, song number 15 on the recorder. So hit enter, and now the song is loading up. Okay. 
So that is the song. Okay, so located at the beginning of the song. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the amplifier and get the microphone hooked up. So, oh, cool, the sound box. The sound box. So the amplifier is in there for the yes. guitar? Yes, we designed and built this sound box as kind of a miniature uh, recording booth. And the idea is, is this foam is sound absorbing. It keeps the sound from, from bouncing around and making weird uh, artifacts and resonances. So what we get is a pure, clean sound from the amplifier directly into the microphone uh, without any weird harmonics or anything getting in there. It, it makes for a much tighter sound and very a lot easier to manipulate once it's on the recorder. That is a badass idea. So now I'm plugging the microphone in. And while I'm thinking about it, I have to unmute tracks. So virtual tracks, those just hang out while you're doing other work and then you add them in later? Well, what it is, come on over here and I'll show you. You can take a look at the screen and I'll show you how it works. So can you see it real well in there? Okay, so what I do is I hit this button. This is V track button, and it means virtual tracks. Now, if you look at the screen here, what you see, all of these, you got a bunch of dots and you got a bunch of squares. What the squares represent are tracks that already have audio on them. Okay, and uh, if they're if the squares are filled in that means that's the track that's available that's what you're going to hear if you hit the play button uh if it's an open square that means there's audio there but that's not the, the track that's pulled up so what i do is it's on virtual track one and you can see how track one is highlighted there what i'm going to do is i'm going to scroll down to virtual track four and it'll tell you right over here is V track four. If I wanted to, I could actually get in there and name that track. It would be rhythm guitar one. I'm not gonna do that because I don't really need to. Now I just punch number two and do the same thing. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right, and now what we have to do, since we're not using any of the onboard effects, I don't have to have guitar or bass or vocal highlighted, I go to multi-track. You can see how that lights up all eight of these right here. That means all of these tracks are ready to record right now when it's blinking red like that. Well, I don't want to record on, I just want to record on track one. So punch the buttons, turn those lights out. That means nothing will be recorded on those tracks. What I want to mute. 13 and 14, I'm not going to need to hear that. Uh, so now it's set to record only on track one, and I also need to turn the effects off. When you hit that button on multi-track, it comes up and it'll say Rock Band, and it tells you what the uh, equalizer is set for. I don't want any equalization on this during recording. I'll change the EQ during playback if I have to, you know, during mix down and mastering. EQ so, is equalization? Equalization, yes. So all I have to do is I punch that button again, it turns it off and then exit and so now what I'm going to get is a completely clean recording uh, whatever goes on the recorder is exactly what you're going to hear out of the amplifier now I have to pick my guitar so from for this song the guitar we're going to use is my trusty flying V so last song I used the SG for leads I probably probably will do that again but we haven't gotten that far yet, so. I love the flying V, it's such an enigma. It is an interesting guitar, for sure. I've had this guitar since I was 17 years old. My grandfather gave it to me. Take these keys off so I don't scratch the finish. For sure. All right, and so now, many things to think about. So, turn the amp on. Oh my god. <laughs> Standing pretty close to it. All right, the amp is already set up 
for the sound that I want because I'm going to use the same settings as I did for Speed Freak. I want it to sound the same and I really like the sound I got dialed in so I'm going to leave it that way. So amp is on. Now I come over here to the pedal board. Turn my volume up. I'm going to tune right now. The Speed Freak was recorded in a uh, half step down. And basically that means your standard tuning is E, A, D, G, B, and E on your strings. But when you go half step down, then it's E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, etc. Uh, but Fetish was originally done in straight tuning, your regular E, A, D, G, B, E. So I have to tune this guitar to match that because I don't want to be changing that much of the song. Besides, the vocals are really deep on it. If I go a half step down, I don't know if I can hit it. All right, guitar is all tuned up now. Uh, takes a little bit of work to bring an entire guitar up half a step. A lot of people don't realize this. When you're having to retune all six strings, by the time you get to the last string, it's changed how the neck is flexed which is going to change how the other strings are tuned. So you got to do it and then you do it again and then you got to do it a third time and then you got to check it. And that's how you know that that's how you can be sure that your guitar is tuned up. the original version of the song and play along to it just to kind of get through the whole thing get myself familiar with the rhythm of it you'll be able to hear the guitar but not the not what's going on on the recorder right now the timing on fetish is so important because it's so sexy thank you i like it too So you said you had just uh, smacked the headstock so you needed to retune. Right. Also, after you play, it's always a good time to retune if you're getting ready to record. You want everything to sound as good as you can make it sound out right out of the gate. It's a little, it's less things that you have to, uh, less things that you have to try to compensate for after the fact. So, all right, I've done my practice. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the beginning and I'm going to try to record it. So Raw and unvarnished. process you try to, you want to try to make as good a recording at the beginning as you can uh, any kind of screw up go back and redo it so you can get through most of the song without screwing up but then you make a mistake you can punch it in but at the beginning it's hard to punch in so <clears throat> here we go
Wow, that's incredible sustain. Yeah, it's got some really good sustain on that, doesn't it? All right. 